Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Nightmares Nightly. Halloween was always a big deal in my small town. All through the month of October, Mayor Higgins would hold various events and attractions. Our town is so popular on Halloween that the mayor even had its official name changed to Hallow's Crest. He was going to use Halloween Town, but obviously couldn't, due to copyright reasons. Hallow's Crest sounded much better anyway. Everyone in town took it seriously too, and the spooky season everyone else talks about, when they refer to October, doesn't exist for us. It's more like spooky year, but every year. Nobody, however, took it as serious as Farmer Tom. Thomas Maynard was your average old McDonald type of farmer, overalls and all. The man had acres upon acres of farmland, which he used to set up all sorts of attractions like corn mazes, pumpkin patches, haunted barn tours, and more. His most famous attractions, however, were his Halloween decorations. Nobody in your spiffy, privileged little cul-de-sac has decorations half as good as his. Tom took pride in his work. He would spend all year devising new works of devilry that scared the hell out of people in town. In any old boring town, he might be considered weird or off in the head, but Farmer Tom was the most popular person in it. All the townsfolk even donated to his cause as well. They would either donate or just straight up buy him supplies he needed to craft things and fill their frightful little town as well as his farm up. Now, when I tell you that his attractions looked real, oh, I mean, jeez, this man knew how to craft. One year, he created this giant spider structure that was made primarily of wood, but the outside was completely covered in fur. Real fur from real animals. When asked about how he acquired the fur, he claimed that he had bought most of it and had it shipped here and the rest of it he gathered from random roadkill. Nobody in town questioned him because he had come from a very wealthy family and decided to break away from the big cities where they lived and settle down in the country. I guess he found his perfect fit. He didn't need the town's donations to his cause, but he accepted them because they just wanted to give back to him for all the spooky joy he spread throughout the years. Now... Tom would be gone for an entire two months of the year, every single year. All the townsfolk guessed that it was just his well-deserved vacation, or that maybe he was going to see family. He would always leave around July and come back at the beginning of September. Over the entire month of September, he would be secretly preparing his decorations for the month of Halloween. His best and scariest decorations he ever made also doubled as a good resource to scare off crows too. That's right, you guessed it, scarecrows. And his scarecrows weren't these puffy fat wannabe straw men that had cute noses and a smile that you could just pick up at Walmart. His scarecrows were all different sizes and he could position them in all kinds of ways. Some would stand, others would be performing some kind of action like raking a field or chopping a tree. Some would stand guard at the front of his attractions, and others would be in his fields posted up like a normal scarecrow. Nobody messed with these things, mainly because they were creepy as hell, even for a town obsessed with Halloween, but also because it annoyed Tom. One year, a kid no older than seven had started messing with the straw on one of the legs of a scarecrow. He had managed to tear off most of the hay straws on one leg, before Tom discovered it. He shut the farm down to visitors after that for a whole two months. The parents of the kid apologized and he accepted. Ever since then, no one, and I mean no one, screws with him. That was, until the Carter family moved in. They needed some adjustments, but eventually after a month or so, they became a part of the regular town and I got in the hang of how things worked. That same year, around the end of August, the Carter kid was hanging around his friends 
and they mentioned about how Tom would be back soon to prepare his decorations. Now, most people know that kids can be little rebels, and sometimes nigh uncontrollable, but the kids in Hallow's Crest knew the rules and followed them well. Tom gave them enough spooky rewards as it was, and knew that if they messed with him, that they would possibly get banned from the farm, have their parents upset at them, and not get any of Tom's candied jerky when they trick-or-treated at his house. The last one was their favorite, and the town's favorite food, actually. It tasted so good. Anyway, the Carter boy became curious as well as rebellious, and he didn't care about the consequences because he was new. He just didn't understand. He decided that he would sneak over to Tom's farm when he got back, and see just how he made these terrifying creations. He waited until Tom pulled into his driveway one day and followed him down to the woods. Tom had a place in the woods away from everyone else where he prepared. It was a large shack that held his supplies. His workshop, if you will. The Carter boy managed to not be seen by Tom and had ducked near a bush. He was just about to try to find a window to try and peer through when Tom walked out the front door, got in his blue pickup truck, and headed back to his farm. He must have forgotten something because he was pissed off, huffing and puffing when he left. The boy peered out of the bush to check if the coast was clear, and he bolted to the front door of the shack once he had seen the last bit of blue from the truck dash over the hill. In his fit of annoyance, Tom must have left the door unlocked, so the boy let himself in. The shack was large on the inside. He had seen stacks of various wood and other materials neatly laying on one side of the room with multiple pegboards of hanging tools. Tom had bins of random clothes that he decorated his scarecrows with, everything from kid clothes to grown adults. There were also piles of fur and other animal parts like claws, hooves, beaks, and other things that wouldn't rot. In a room towards the back were five large deep freezers. In them were containers of fake blood and animal parts. The boy was just about to leave in fear of Tom coming back when he heard strange moaning. It sounded like the type of moaning someone does when they're in pain or when someone just wakes up. But there were many moaning sounds coming from Somewhere, he just wasn't sure yet. The boy followed the moaning noises to a large rug in the center of the room with all the supplies in it. It was right below him now. The boy curiously moved the rug and found a big trap door. For some reason, it wasn't locked. He either thought that Tom didn't need a reason to lock it or that he never thought it would be found by anyone else. He slowly lifted it. There were a set of stairs under the door that led down to another level, into what looked like a dingy handmade basement. At the end of the stairs, there was a door that simply read, Scarecrows. The boy opened the door slowly and hesitantly. What he saw was ungodly and disturbing beyond all measure. There were people, naked people, all tied to posts. At least twenty or more and they all had tubes inserted into their noses, feeding them. There were also IVs in their hands that connected them each to some kind of narcotic drug. They were alive, if you could call it that, and producing an eerie moan like they were in pain. Tom had only given them enough drugs to render them helpless, like zombies, so they were able to be in a state of hazy consciousness. The Carter boy ran out as fast as he could and bolted back to the town. Somehow, he made it back without alerting Tom to his presence, but he left the door to Tom's shack open. When the town's police went reluctantly to investigate, there was no sign of Tom anywhere. He had fled. The officers investigated the shack and found the people in the basement in the freezers of real human and animal blood, as well as parts. They also discovered the clothes that he used to dress up the scarecrows, along with a small chest above the bin that the boy either couldn't see or reach. 
Inside the chest were countless IDs of the people he had kidnapped and killed. There were more than 200 IDs. Needless to say, our little town got a rebranding and decided that one month a year was good enough. But nobody, not even farmers, makes scarecrows anymore. Thanks for listening, everybody. And if you like what I'm doing and want to hear more, hit that subscribe button for more Nightmares Nightly.